وأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول أولي الأمر منكم and always a reminder for myself and abduk al ajeezu da'if wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah on this blessed month of immense blessings, immense holy nights that this love and ishq of ours for Allah which reflects to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad because it's what Allah loves. When you truly love Allah He directs your heart to what He loves. He gives you from the best of what He has and the most dearest and nearest to that reality is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Means on these blessed nights with this ishq and with this love we're reminded about what we talked about last week. That Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq Salam, Siddiq al Mutlaq, and the immensity of that reality that only Allah reflect for us and give for us from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that from the presence of Prophet to talk about his Qaleel, the one whom he loves, and the one whom loves him. And the station that that represents of that ishq and that Siddiqiyya ishq, the love and the representation of the reality. One of the understandings of the reality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq for Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah that it comes into our life to teach that your heart has to have the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that is the love of Allah and that if your heart is a sun, your head is the moon. Means if your heart is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet teaching to us that my moon is Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq That he represents me, he represents this love, he represents this ishq, he represents this character and this companionship and proximity to me. And this turuq is based on that reality. This turuq is, is a path towards that ishq and that love. That when we want to know that how is my character, what should be my character, what is this example, means that I have to take the way of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq That he's coming and teaching us a reminder from last week, the depth of that understanding. That I represent the moon, I represent this following of this reality. Imam Ali Salam represents a different reality but that's for a different night, that'll be on the 13th of Rajab, inshaAllah. But this reality of the face of the moon, not the hidden reality of the moon and what it represents, the face of the moon and the face of guidance. The face of when Allah shamsi wal qamar, that the perfection of guidance, Allah says, I show you upon the horizon and you should see it and find it within yourself. Means you find within yourself and upon the horizon but inside is more difficult for those whom are not experienced in tafakkur and contemplation. So they see on the horizon what Allah gave to us as the most important examples on our horizon. What is a horizon? The sun means look out a little bit, oh, as soon as you look out you see a sun that represents eternity. It's been there from the beginning and we don't even know when the beginning was. And it represents a light, that's the prophetic reality. Nothing is like Allah that's something kindergarten when you graduate and you have an aql and a head, you don't give examples by saying it's like Allah says, I have no shaykh, I have nothing shabi, nothing like unto me. Don't compare me with something you don't understand, you'll make a mistake. Best of adab, nothing is like Allah keep this within the ocean of creation, it's a created light, it's an example and it's eternal. 
and it benefits our existence upon this earth. Awliyaullah come and teach us once you study the reality of the sun, what does it give to this earth? It gives you eyesight, it gives you breath, it gives you guidance and warmth. If your earth was a little bit farther you'd freeze, if your earth was a little bit closer you'd burn. It's a rahmah and a mercy for your existence. Other planets when they're too far from their sun they're frozen. So Allah could have created you like a jinn in a frozen climate. But He said, no I give you mercy, I'm going to beautify this earth because I'm going to bring these holy feet upon this earth, the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad So means this sun represents the Muhammadan light and the one whom Allah gave that station to follow it completely and perfectly is Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and the moon, right? Represents the moon. I am the moon of Sayyidina Muhammad I am the one whom followed Prophet with all difficulty, with all testings, with everything. I am the one who represents that perfection for you, don't look left and don't look right. Those whom Allah inspired out of all the tariqahs, inspired to Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah is the soul of every other tariqah, it comes from its ocean of Naqshbandiyya, not even comparable in its understanding and the depth of its reality because of the proximity of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq to the proximity of Sayyidina Muhammad that we're talking before that on the Israh wal Miraj Prophet heard the voice of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. So, this haqqaiq and this heart and this reality, these secrets and these knowledges coming from the heart of the great Siddiq. His heart is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad. So, we go back to all of the Naqshbandi teachings. So Safar at the beginning of our journey we entered into a cave, the physical cave in which Prophet ran to from Mecca to Medina stopped in that cave that represents the Muhammadan heart. Means everything that happened on, on a physical was a spiritual implication for it, there was a spiritual reality. It's not just you go traveling and Prophet would stop for two seconds here or three days. Every step, every movement has an immense haqq haqqaiq and reality. And because of awliyaullah's love and ishq and contemplation, Allah has destined for them in their ishq to be taught those realities. That that is a Muhammadan heart and that when He took His beloved companion into that heart then means Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is teaching us, I am in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Do you want to come in? And that's why awliyaullah Mawlana Shaykh, Sultanul Awliya said, anyone in this tariqah their arwah, their atoms were present in that cave and present still to today in the cave. That there's no time for Allah that event is continuously happening in the cave and they block it off. They block all these holy sites, these Dajjal people because they don't want anyone to have access. Still happening in that cave means that the, the great Muhammadan reality and the reality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq inside the Muhammadan heart. So that you understand the turuq, the I am the moon that you want to be, if you want to be. Others just came for a meal and a nice you know zikr, that's okay, that's something different. But those who want to reach and want to be from that reality then they begin to teach its reality. Bi qamarun, take the path of a moon, take the difficulties and hardships in life because the moon is beaten, it's not ornate and beautiful like the earth, it took a beating, maybe one time it was and then it got tested and tested and just became a place of difficulty. 
be like the moon, follow the sun towards the ocean of these realities and Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, the father of this tariqah as salam comes to teach for us. Uh, of course, alayhi salam, people are wondering, why are you saying alayhi salam? Because Allah is even giving salam on here hatta mitra al-fajr. That I give you salams for anyone praying fajr all the way to your fajr time, Allah will send you salams. So these great Siddiqs, they are the, the rahmah of Allah the symbol of salams and every haqqaiq dressing into their souls. Teaching that, I'm in the heart, in that Muhammadan heart. If you want to come into the Muhammadan heart, who can save you inside that heart? So that not to be continuously under the, the affliction of shaitan. Why Prophet gave that example? Why did that happen? Was Allah just telling stories? Nation just has a nice story to remember? Or there's a haqqaiq that Allah wants from guidance that I know that I've created you and I put you on this path and your path is going to be continuous satanic attack. Take this off, take that off, put this on, put every, every type of attack to destroy your deen and destroy your religion, destroy your belief until the end Prophet described, it'd be like holding fire in your hand, hot coal. Do you feel like you're holding hot coal yet? Then you didn't get there, we still have time to come. So what does that mean it's going to be like hot coal? Just putting a beard is not like hot coal. I mean shaitan is going to be attacking, attacking, attacking until Prophet described that if my time, if they left one-tenth of what I taught them it was Jahannam. But a nation will come in the end of days, if they follow one-tenth of what I taught they'll be in paradise. That's a big reality that has to do with the ishq and the love. So come into the Muhammadan heart Allah giving that if you want to really be ashiqeen and have this ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad because it's an ishq for Allah Qulini kuntum tuhibun Allah fatabiyuni yuhibbukum Allah. Don't think you're going to get Allah's love and you follow your own desires. I follow my own desire, I want Allah's love. Well, that says shaitan because he thinks he's also doing that. And you see where that got him. But Allah follow him and when you're oppressors to yourself, run to him Sayyidina Muhammad and let and ask my forgiveness in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So means all of this haqqaiq to reach into that reality, then we go back into the heart and the cave and whose great foot was blocking a hole where a snake was coming. Means that the Siddiq, Qadam al Siddiq, the great Siddiq salam, says that if you want this ishq and this love, this is what Allah has given to me, this responsibility for ashiqeen. They would be inspired to have a love for Allah, sincere love, and Allah would inspire them to love Sayyidina Muhammad and then inspires them to follow this great turuqs. But there's only one whom can put his foot on that heart. Otherwise Prophet would give other stories and I went somewhere else and this companion also put his foot and I went somewhere else and this companion also saved me from a lion. No, it was one event, one cave, one hole. The great Siddiq is saying that my qadam is the one that holds and blocks that shaitan and that he'll try to bite but I'll deal with him. But my qadam, follow my way and my example, my ishq, my love, my companionship. So then it teaches the turuq, then I want to be from this love, very simple because how am I going to use this today, these stories and these events? That I want to be in the Muhammadan heart, I want this immense love for Allah I want to follow Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq I want my qadam, my feet and my path, qadam and foot means my path. I want my path to be from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq's path. 
I want to have the, the foot of truth and with I'm truthful with my deeds and my actions. Not that I appear to be truthful but my deeds are truthful and my actions are truthful. And as a result he begins to dress, I'll dress your feet, I'll make your path to be clean, I'll inspire you when shaitan is nibbling on your foot that don't do that on your path, don't go in that direction. Because this is what guidance, Allah says, there's no guidance for unless somebody is with waliun murshidun. In Surat Al-Kahf, the same surah that describes these events, says, there is no guidance unless Allah sends you a wali who's a murshid. Who's a wali and a murshid? Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq All of the companions are beyond wilayat and sainthood. And this guidance of this reality is teaching that I'll teach you and inspire you that your path to be clean, to be right, to take the righteous step, leave the badness, although shaitan is biting and eating at your feet at all times. Then I'll dress you and I'll make your face and all the reality of your face to be siddiqiyah and qamarun. That I'll dress you from truthful ears in which they heard the reality because the great Siddiq is dressing. Not that you just follow one companion and say, I love this companion, I don't know why I have an affinity to them. But follow them and he's teaching how he's going to dress in today, today how I'm going to affect your life, take my path, follow my turuq. And it has Imam Ali in it through Sayyidina Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, Sayyidina Qasim, Sayyidina Salaman al-Farsi, that, that secret is for another day. But today's reality is about Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, take my path. It's loaded with secrets. Take your foot and come into my heart, into my love and make your foot and your path to be from my path. And I bless your qadam, inspire your qadam that don't let it to go here and there where shaitan is biting at your, your step and making you to lose your path. I'm going to dress you with the qamar reality, I want to dress your face because in Sayyidina Abu Bakr you're teaching us what was his quality. So I'm going to dress your hearing from my hearing. This is where the love comes, this is a great love story because people are not understanding and they're mixing satanic energies, satanic characteristics and this great love story is teaching us this love that I have for Sayyidina Muhammad is beyond your understanding. That I'm the one whom is Samina wa Tana, what many doubted, I didn't doubt. Whatever was spoken from his holy lips I was the first to believe, the first adult to believe. The first one did always say, no, I heard it, I obeyed. If Prophet said, means the Siddiqiyah character is that my ears had an immense love that can't be even understood, can't be even surpassed. I dress you from that love. See, so he begins to teach, when this Muhammadan heart is talking to you, don't mix it with waswas, I never did that. I never listened to Prophet and then with my e other ear I listened to the garbage of shaitan. The two I don't, mech, I don't mix them. I don't give an ear to shaitan, listen to waswas backbiting, bad talks, crazy people who talk against our belief system. But my entire existence was this love. So the ihtiram and the love that you show for that reality coming out because the shaykhs are the Muhammadan representatives. When they're speaking Muhammadan haqqaiqs, the level in which you show an ihtiram, a respect and a reverence, He's granting you now Siddiqiyah hearing. Because you say, okay, when the Muhammadan channel opens up, the reality of Prophet transmitting, I kept it with a reverence and a love 
As a result Allah opened all the purity of my hearing and I was the one whom was the example of Samina wa Tana which is the tariqah's way, I heard and I'm obeying. And he also said that if I ever talk against Islam and the sharia you have every permission to leave me. So nobody's bound to a false shaykh. He said, if I leave Islam, when he became and took his bayat, he said, if I ever leave Islam, sharia and your understandings of what Prophet brought for us, leave me. So it's not a, you know, you completely submit and question nothing. When the shaykh is doing crazy, wild, bad things, forbidden things, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq tells you, leave him, he's gone astray, he's not carrying anymore the Siddiqiyah. He can look as nice and nurani as he wants, he's not carrying Siddiqiyah reality. Because we're now going into his character, he's going to teach that this ear has to have immense love. So then everyone go back home and say, my ears really loving? Or thum amanu thum kafar, one day I'm believing, one day I'm like listening to the whispers of shaitan. Well you can't have uh, Prophet on one side and shaitan on the other side. So then he's drawing attention, clean your ears, these ears can't be mixed. Either you're taking a path to reality or you take a path towards Jahannam because if you listen enough to shaitan he's not going to guide you correctly, he's going to keep convincing you to make wrong decision after wrong decision. So it comes and begins to teach that make your ears to submit to this love because this is only from love, this is nothing about force. Then he says, my eyes had such a reverence such a love for the reality of Prophet How much I loved him, how much I admired him, how much ishq I had from my love that just yearning to see him and be with him. That what Allah opened of yaqeen and certainty within that heart address you from the purity because we're asking purity and siddiqiyah character through action and through their amal and through their words. That I'll make your eyes to be truthful. Clean it, wash it, don't look at that but look to the light of Prophet so then they would be really Siddiqiyah, they would be continuously yearning to connect with the Muhammadan light because they have such a desire and a hunger, nothing will satisfy me except being at Raza Sharif in the presence of Prophet So then they would be earnest, earnestly trying to connect their heart the shaykhs are a reflection of that reality that begin to take them to the reality of Rosa Sharif and saying, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, that any moment that I close my eye I just want to be with you. My yearning and my sincere love for you is closing my desire from the eye and opening my physical heart's desire to be with you so that you become from Ahlul Basira. They still live in the dunya, they still eat and drink and drive. They still have children and family but their desire for akhirah is much more powerful than their desire for dunya. That they yearn for the time that they have in that presence to be in that light and he begins to dress their, their nature of vision and they become from Ahlul Basira in which their love and their yearning for the Muhammadan light and the Muhammadan reality as it reflects through awliyaullah, through the companions, through Ahlul Bayt all the way to the presence of the Sultan. So then I dress you with the hearing, with my seeing and I dress you with the Siddiqiyah, Lisan al-Siddiq al-Aliyah. The Siddiq and Ali because the Naqshbandi carries both realities, Lisan al-Siddiq al-Aliyah, the truthful most highest tongue. Because if I dress you, you'll be speaking from the heart of Prophet not at your station but at my station. You're not trying to achieve something for your reality, so I want to dress you from my reality. What was my proximity to the reality of Prophet What was this ishq and this love that I carry of that reality? I'll dress you from that reality, bless you from that reality. Means then this great Siddiq salam, is understanding this responsibility and all of this love and all of this ishq 
it teaches that our way is built on khitmat. Right? You don't think you're going to get anywhere because you prayed. You think your salah is impressing Allah Or that you gave and how much did you give? You gave like the Siddiq that his entire life was given and put himself into poverty. Nobody can do anything through their amal. And they know and the hadith is teaching us, we're looking for 10%. They will have left 90%. This khidmat and this love for Prophet is the immense yearning and love. That with this love so deep for Prophet they could never imagine bringing anything bad, anything not right, not pure, not clean. So how could you be destined to clean from the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and bring these souls to be clean. What type of fear would you have if Allah gives you that responsibility that you may let down Prophet So means all their good character was so that their khidmat would be pure, that their khidmat and their service. You pray, you fast, you give so that your service will be pure. Not because you were getting the reward of your praying, your fasting and your charity. But you pray that those would purify your character. It's not your prayer that gets you into paradise because Allah is going to judge you. Maybe you prayed because everyone in your house forced you to pray. Your dad would come and smack you if you didn't pray. That's not a praying that counts to Allah That's why that amal is going to be judged. Many parents, they beat their kids, get up and pray. Oh, they're all lined up, okay. No, it's not the amal. They're forced to give, they're forced to fast, it's Ramadan, somebody may sneak and try to eat when nobody's watching and they beat them up too. No, so the amal has to be judged by Allah But no, they did all their amal, not asking for Allah to judge it, but Ya Rabbi, the, the proof should be in my character. If my amal was good, my character should be sweet and wanting to be of service. And as a result that service brought every barakah into their life. Even all, Prophet described even their actions, they are servants of Allah Their actions if you look at it may appear to be weak but their khuluq and their character is very dear to Allah because He sweetens and purifies them. These sweet and purified people, they live a life of serving and helping. As a result then the great Siddiq is the best of examples of that reality. I lived a life wanting to serve, I serve with my physical life and I've been given a mission in the spiritual realm to guide the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad back to Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why Naqshbandi is so powerful up to the last day. Many flags of turuqs are all over the place and practically down. Naqshbandi a flag and these haqqaiqs are very strong. Because of this support, that until the last day on this earth, this reality has to bring people to the Muhammadan haqqaiq and the Muhammadan ishq. So then he's teaching that with your good character, you'll have a beautific khidmat. You'll have a good character. Can you do khidmat with horrible character? That you got and that you hit somebody that, why didn't you pick this up? Why didn't you do like that? What kind of a khidmat is that? that? Everybody would run from you. So the most beautific service is by those whom have good character. So all our usul, all our actions and praying and fasting was to have good character. When there's good and beautific character, Allah inspires, serve now because you have something to serve with. You're serving out of love and ishq. Means then Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq's great service is this tariqah. That bring them with this tariqah, we want to bring them to the reality of Prophet all those whom lost and astray, what greater gift can I give to my beloved Prophet He's not in need of our money anymore, they're in the world of light. Is bring these souls back to the Muhammadan haqqaiq. That's why you get their nazar. 
Nazar is not just you say, look at me. Their nazar is upon us because what we're doing, how you produce, how you promote, how do you take that responsibility and reach to people, thousands, tens of thousands of people, how do you teach them and inspire them towards this love and begins to teach that this responsibility and the immensity of the responsibility, that's why, that's why when Prophet on Jummah got up and described the hadith and somebody asked questions that you will be with whom you love. <clears throat> Why Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was so excited and happy by that hadith that he began to whirl in his ecstasy, not for himself, he already knows he's the Siddiq. Prophet already described that, I heard your feet in paradise but because of the responsibility that these souls that I'm responsible to bring back and this khidmat that my soul will eternally be doing, He gave me the key of its reality is that they would just love you and by that love like a magnet they'll be with you and you're already with me and you will have brought them and pulled them into my reality. Imagine trying to round up people, trying to convince people, trying to clean people. But then Prophet gave the key from Allah they merely should love you, you'll be with whom you love. So then the real guidance, especially in days of difficulty because if you don't know what day you're in, how do you know how you're supposed to be guiding people? Are we in the first day where if they leave 10% yeah you're all out, you're out, you're out, you're out, go to Jannah or you're in the last day. SubhanAllah, one person following at least 1% of 10% they're good. Then he comes and teaches, you're in the last day and the hadith of your time is if they follow 10% they're paradise people, don't be hard on them, don't make them to run, don't push all these laws and all these rules, they're not following any of them. And then what? But you have a key, that's what we describe, the who and the who men because they have hidayat and Allah dressed them with wow and these are the real who men that are coming forward and teaching and they're teaching that this hadith was a warning for us, they're not going to follow these rules, don't put up so many rules that people are not going to be able. You have to know the time that you're in for guidance and these are the last days and they're barely going to follow anything from what Prophet brought but your key of guidance is ishq and muhabbat. If they love you, they will be with you. So what the great Siddiq is teaching us, let them love you. If they love you, they'll just want to be with you, they don't judge them on what they did and didn't do. They're not going to do it, you're not Allah. Allah knows the time He created and the creation He created and what His creation is going to listen to. Your responsibility from them is to be from the people of who? Give your guidance and have your loving character. If they love you like a magnet, they move towards your reality and I will grab them because I'm already dressing your face. When they look to your face, my eyes will grab them. When they look to you and hear your speech, my ears will grab them. When they listen to your sound, my tongue will grab them. He's, he's dressing, he's not sitting retired, so I'm going to dress you with a Siddiqi character. When your face is a moon from them, says, put your moon out, we will grab them. Means we'll open their hearing when they hear from your tongue. You speak, they hear because they'll lock the, unlock the ears, will open their eyes to begin to see something that other people may not be understanding and seeing. So it means you just put your love out there and we will grab them. As a result, imagine Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq's love begin to dress them, he's already with whom he loves. He pulls their soul into the presence of Prophet to intercede for them because we're at the last days, not the first days. 
People don't need more rules. They need just a place to park their love. I just need to sit somewhere and feel the ishq and the love. I know there's a lot of rules and I know that they're not following. So the great Siddiq is teaching us the secret of guidance in the last days is ishq and love and muhabbat. They have good character so that you can be of service. Otherwise go out with bad character and scare people. So then have to have the great Siddiqiyah character, truthful and goodness, kindness. As a result of that, go out for your khidmat and serve the nation with this ishq and this love and this muhabbat. Then the secret of their teaching and their realities to put out these realities is just to catch people. The person's listening, that Siddiqiyah reality hits their heart and opens it. The Siddiqiyah reality begins to dress their ears that, oh I heard something I never heard before into my heart and then begin to train them that open your heart and they begin to open the reality of their spiritual vision to grab and bring them back. We pray that in this understanding of guidance and these holy nights, Subhana man huwa khalaqun nur, Allah dress us from these lights, bless us from these lights. That this is a way of ishq and muhabbat in these last days, Ya Rabbi, give us all character to be tolerant, to be patient, to have good character, ishq and muhabbat of your Divinely Presence, ishq and muhabbat of the love and reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and make us to be a reflection of that. That great Siddiq upon this earth, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani on the 7th of Rajab, that literally you could look at Mawlana Shaykh and you would cry. You looked at Mawlana Shaykh and all you could feel was the ishq and love and that he was not calling you a kafir, he was not calling you anything bad, he was not trying to throw you away but he knew his responsibility in the presence of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. I'm not here to throw people into the hands of shaitan, shaitan already doing that. My only purpose was to bring you with love and ishq. That that's what the nation is in need of, is that these great faces and great saints that would bring people with ishq and muhabbat and such a smile. We pray that his nazar be upon us and that he dress us from these characteristics and this ishq and muhabbat to bring people to the presence of these great awliya, these great sahabi, great Ahlul Bayt and that Prophet to be happy and ridha with us. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha.